The 2010 constitution, when it was promulgated, was a compromise of political um, negotiations. Uh, it actually was trying to address the dominance of Mount Kenya politics, which had taken root from independence. And the Mount Kenya numbers were feared by other communities within the negotiations to dominate uh, elections. So there were two things that came about, 50 plus one, meaning that any candidate to succeed to be president would need to garner a majority of more than half the Kenyans. And then to mitigate that, there was the issue of half of the counties. You would have to get 25% in half the counties. These roadblocks that were erected in the 2010 constitution make it impossible or actually daydreaming for people who constitute themselves in small groups to actually ever think they can enjoy political power. The reason that the Zakayo and people like him in the past run to these tribal chiefs like Raila is because they want to get as close to 50 plus one as possible and as close to half the counties as possible. Unless there is a Genzote approach, an all hands on deck approach, in terms of putting the political class together with those who are agitating together, they will never be able to marshal numbers uh, that can overcome the barriers that have been um, have been uh, fa fa fabricated into the 2010 constitutional negotiation, constitutional order. And to me, um, the issue of uh, the agency of the political alignment is as important as the economic argument. Because assuming today you brought Ruto down and there was an election tomorrow, there would be no election without an IBC. Right now as we speak, we, with Ruto now joining with Raila, and uh, Raila controlling uh, three quarters of parliament or the technical parliament of the opposition, they have the numbers to do anything they want. So even the formation of a new IBEC will not be transparent. It can be stacked by them to have an outcome in 2027 that would defeat the popular will of the people. And if William Ruto was prepared to deploy the military illegally, he now wants to arm the NYS. He was able to shoot at Kenyans at will and nothing happened to him when he was alone. And when he actually knelt down, now he has Raila Odinga on his side, so he feels more emboldened. Why do people think that we are going to have a free and fair election, even if you prove the question of the economy? And the reason I'm saying that there has to be a, um, a parallel approach, uh, an approach, yes, to educate the masses, but also a political realignment to ensure that we are visible in every county, so that in every ward and every a county and every urban area, there are voices to echo in terms of the economy, but in terms also in terms of people becoming educated to the other issues that not only surround the economy, but surround checks and balances about the state. Let me give an example of what I mean by checks and balances around the state. For example, if we are not going to have the rule of law obeyed at the primary level, how are you even going to sort out disputes between uh, individuals, disputes between companies, when the rule of law collapses? And therefore, the rule of law is not just a safeguard for political problems. It is also a safeguard for socioeconomic issues. So I want to uh, maybe echo today uh, the voices of the no reform, no elections of the 90s that were talking about the, re the, the real need to amalgamate the political emancipation to the socio-economic emancipation so that you have an approach that is a three-prone approach where you are educating the masses, you are mobilizing the masses, but you are also creating a situation where they have a winnable solution because you can have a, a liberation and not be able to win because you don't have the numbers or the coordination to win. Therefore, I would like to summarize by saying that I think that... Uh, all operators in this resistance to Ruto 
be they political parties, be they NGOs, be they lawyers, be they people like Jimmy Wanjigi who are doing a job like Martin Luther King did a job and he was not necessarily a politician, but he echoed the issue of the black consciousness and civil rights movement. So I agree that there is a place, uh, and in fact an important place for the economic message to be drummed in and out, but that will not stop other people who have political ambitions from their adventures. And I think as those adventures and competing interests take on, they should not be seen to be competitors. They should be seen to be people who are all against the Kyle. All that we want is a system that allows competition to be fair and to allow competition to choose the best winner. And the best winner is normally chosen through a process that is going to culminate in either a two horse race that will emerge through the normal processes. So whoever is starting now uh, at the line may not be the one who takes the tape at the finish. And therefore, even if the Eugene group starts now, there is no uh, guarantee that it is the one that would be at the finish line. But there is no reason that they should not take off and another one should not take off. And eventually Kenyans, through their wisdom, will come up and say, this is a team or group of people that will take on Zakayo. A government is of the people by the people and for the people. And the whole concept of government uh, derived from the theory, political theory, that a people would delegate the authority to um, regulate behavior, conduct of all kinds, social and economic, to an entity called government for their benefit. So since 20, since 1215, um, when the Magna Carta was brought in as a first document to uh, define that authority, delegated authority from the people to an entity called government, uh, two other uh, countries, uh, the U.S. Uh, in 1776 and the French later in 1785, went through this endeavor that you have when you have a government and you cannot hold it to account the government goes wrong the government goes excessive and then the people cannot be able to um regulate or hold it to answer uh, to its excesses we must as a country put a dipstick and answer the question how far are we in holding the government of the day to account and what institutions are there and how strong are they to do that? Of course, because of checks and balances, we have parliament and we have the judicial arms that are meant to assist the population to hold uh, the executive to account. Now, the issue of accountability is not only about laws uh, that regulate the conduct of society, but also the management of the money in an economy, what is the power of the past? In the U.S., the Congress retains generously the power of the past because it did not see it fit to leave uh, to leave the executive or a president to unilaterally decide how to use and allocate money. That same model of 1776 was adopted by the Westminster model of democracy, which Kenya also is participant of. And the idea is that parliament is able to allocate money and then be able to oversight how that money is used by the executive. Why we are where we are currently in Kenya is because uh, the Gen Z uh, population of Kenya of 2024 began to question the propriety of the tax tax regimes or tax measures that were aimed to raise money to fund the economy and also how accountable that money was being spent, leading to the protest that led to all the circumstances and incidences that we are now uh, evaluating today. Now, I raise this question because until we have an account of how the money we raise through taxation is used and whether or not the tax that is being levied on the people is fair because you cannot have taxation without representation, we come back to the same question of governance. I want to raise this issue today because you cannot be able to have governance if you do not have accountability. And you cannot have accountability until the people understand the need to have this very strongly ingrained in one generation to the other.
now that there is this movement to the AU of Raila Odinga, and now that the Azimio Brigade is beginning to realign, and now that the JNZ movement, which had come up very well in this country, is openly and illegally being suppressed, does this mean that the death of democracy in Kenya is happening under our watch and there is no accountability to the government? And now the government, which was wrong before, will become more wrong now that they feel they have ODM and new partners with them. Is the democracy of Kenya under threat? And as such, is the economic future of this nation under threat? I will Asante sana kwa kutazama wa Source TV na kuomba kama uja subscribe uweze kusubscribe ili wakati wote tunapata habari kama hii unakuwa wa kwanza kuipata kama uko na maoni niachie hapo kwenye comment section kama uja subscribe mara nyingine tena na kuomba uweze kusubscribe au sio nashukuru sana kwa wakati wako huyo amekuwa ni Tony Gashoka akizungumzia tu yale ambayo yanafanyika hapa nchini Kenya au sio asante sana na ukue na mchana ama usiku njema